by the end of this video, you'll have made your own crochet wrist warmers and it's gonna be so much easier than you think. Welcome to Bella Coco Crochet. I'm Sarah Jane and this is the place to learn crochet and improve your skills. For this pattern, you need an Aran weight yarn. I've used this yarn from Truly Yarn. It's 100% superwash merino and comes in 115 gram skeins. You will need a main color and a contrast color. I've used a five millimeter crochet hook, but remember to adapt your hook size to suit your personal tension. You will also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle. Stitch markers may come in handy, but aren't essential. The size I'm making today is an adult small, and these measure approximately 16 centimeters in length, which is 6.25 inches, approximately 8.5 centimeters wide, which is just under three and a half inches. The circumference is approximately 18 centimeters, which is a little over seven inches. Just a quick reminder that I always leave all of the information in the description box. So click the show more button below this video. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to begin by taking our main colour and creating a slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and take your crochet hook and insert into your slip knot. So for the cuff, we're going to start off by chaining seven. So that's yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. That's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is going to create the depth of our cuff. So if you want your cuff to be deeper, then you can go ahead and chain more. So this is the stitches that we're going to be creating here, working this way. So you can go ahead and chain more if you want this to be deeper. But mine is going to be six stitches deep, and then this seventh stitch is a turning chain. So for row one, we're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. So not the one that's on the hook. We have one and two. We'll go into that stitch and then yarn over and pull through. So a slip stitch is the same term in the US and the UK. So that's our first slip stitch. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. For row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And then we're going to create the ribbed effect for our cuff. So what we want to do here is we want to look for the full stitch. So if you look at your stitches, we can see these Vs just on here. And this is the top of the stitch. Instead of working into the whole of the stitch, I'll use this central one here just so that you can see a little bit better. Instead of the working into the whole of the stitch like we would normally do, you only want to work into the back loop. So the one furthest away from you, like so. And we're going to do that across the whole of this um, row. So we're going to do six slip stitches. So that first one is right by that chain one. The chain one does not count as a stitch. Yarn over, pull through and pull through. And this might be a good time to take a stitch marker and insert that stitch marker. Just because it can be a little bit tricky with slip stitches to uh, recognize where those stitches are. So I'm going to put that stitch marker in. You don't need to do that if you don't want to, but it can be beneficial. Find the back loop of that next stitch and slip stitch. Being sure not to pull too tight with your slip stitches because they can get really tight if you're not careful. Into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through and pull through. And then into the next, this is number four. Number five. And this last one always looks a little bit different, um, but we can go into that back loop just here and slip stitch. Chain one, turn the work. 
And now what you'll find is the tops of the stitches are just slightly twisted because we've pushed these from this way with the stitches tilt this way. So when we turn it round, the stitches tilt backwards. So I'm going to leave that stitch marker in there. I'm going to tilt the work towards me to find these V's across the top. And then I'm going to go into that first stitch. Now, when you go into this first stitch, make sure that your chain one is not too loose for the beginning of the row because that can make it a little bit inconsistent and a little bit messy. And then grab the yarn and pull through and pull through. And then again, at this point, you can go ahead and mark your first stitch. Find your next stitch into the back loop, slip stitch into the back loop, slip stitch, and then go all the way across. So that's four, five, and here's my last stitch. So I'll just remove my stitch marker, find that back loop, and then slip stitch. And we're going to repeat this over and over Chain one, turn the work, find that first stitch. So if you're really unsure of where to go, you can count backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you'll find the exact stitch that we want to work into. Remembering to pull on your tension here so that this chain one isn't too loose as you work into it. So just pull on your tension slightly and then slip stitch. Take your stitch marker and mark that first stitch. Tilt your work a little so that you can find the back loop of that next stitch and work your way across. That's two, three, four, five and I'll remove this stitch marker and go into that last one. If you struggle with this last one you can just take your finger or your nail and just pull that onto your hook and slip stitch. So this is what your work should be looking like. When you do slip stitch like this, you create a ridge, but it's quite a stretchy stitch, which is really nice, exactly what we want for a cuff. Chain one, turn the work, and then continue. Now you want to make this, like continue for one long piece until you have 42 rows, and this should measure around seven inches when slightly stretched. So go ahead, work that all the way. Rewind the video if you need to but meet me back once you have one long thin piece. So now that you have your 42 rows and it measures your seven inches when slightly stretched, we're going to go ahead and work the main part of the wrist warmers. So we're going to be working along this edge here, the same side as where your hook is, um, and we're going to be uh, working in rows like so. So rather than working like this, we're now working like this. So to do this, we want to chain one and make sure you've rotated your work so that we can work into these row ends here. And what we're going to do is we're going to double crochet into the space next to the chain one. So we go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook yarn over, pull through two. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working into the valleys of these stitches or just into the valleys of the cuff. So when I stretch here, you can see that we have some higher stitches and then some lower stitches. So the ones that are at the top are the peaks and then 
the uh, ones at the bottom are the ballets or the peaks and troughs, whichever way you want to call it. But we're going to be working into these bottom ridge sections. So because we've done 42 stitches, you should have 23 stitches across this row. Now, of course, if you have more or less, you can slightly adapt this to make sure that you have the right amount of stitches. But we already have our first one here. We'll go into that next valley. So if you pull it apart, you can see it there. We'll go into there and do a double crochet into the next one double crochet all the way across until you have those 23 stitches. If you need to add extra, you can go into a couple of the peaks just to um, bring up those stitches or you could even do two in one space if you like. So have a play around to see how it works out but the the most important thing is that they are fairly even all the way across so i now have one two three four five six stitches i'm going to go ahead and work my way to the end of the row making sure that i have those 23 double crochets so go ahead pause the video work your way across and then meet me back once you're ready Okay, so I've worked my way across. I have 23 stitches and the last stitch finished in the row. So mine was correct. I didn't need to adapt, which hopefully if you've counted your slip stitches correctly, you won't need to. Although counting slip stitch rows can be quite tricky. So what we're going to do now is work row two and actually rows two, three and four are exactly the same. So you can come back to this and rewind if you need to. We're going to chain one and turn our work and then we're going to simply do one double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So because we've done our chain one here, that does not count as a stitch. Your first stitch is in this first um, double crochet just here, right at the base of that chain one. So we can see the chain one pulls up here. It pulls up that stitch and we're going to work into that one into the full stitch as a normal double crochet. Yarn over, pull through. Two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. That's one into the next stitch, two, three, four and five and then you're just going to go ahead and work one double crochet in each of those stitches all the way across. I would, I would highly recommend that you count your stitches as you are working or count them once you get to the end of the row because with double crochets it is quite easy especially if you're a be beginner to lose that last stitch on the end of your row. So let's just go across here, right until our end stitch. I always like to stop just before I'm at the end. I'm fairly certain this is our last stitch, but let's just go ahead and count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And our 23rd stitch is on the corner here. So as we can see, it kind of slopes round. We want to make sure that we go in both of those stitches and then do a double crochet. So if you are new to crochet you are a beginner i would highly recommend that you pop in a stitch marker at the beginning of your row so just on row two as i say row three and four are exactly the same so you would chain one turn your work and then do your double crochet into that very first stitch and this at this point if you're using a stitch marker is where you would grab that stitch marker and go into that stitch and work your way 23 double crochets all the way across. So you want to go ahead and pause the video, 
work rows three and four with 21 double crochets in each row. Rewind the video if you need to. And then when we come back, we're going to start this beautiful bar stitch pattern. Okay, so this is what the end of row four is looking like. For row five, it is actually going to be the same with a chain one turn, double crochet into that first stitch and all the way across. However, we are going to be changing color to the contrast color in the last stitch. So what you want to do is work all the way across and then when you're ready to do that last stitch, meet me back and I'll show you how to change color to the contrast color. Okay, so I now have one stitch remaining and I have my contrast color ready for changing color. So what we want to do here is start off by doing our double crochet. So going into that stitch as normal, yarn over and pull through as normal. But this is the last pull through that we have of this stitch. So what we're going to do, instead of yarning over and pulling through this same color, I'm going to place my um, fingers or finger on the hook just here to keep those stitches. Pick up the next color, the contrast color, and loop it over. And then I'm going to put that over my hook. And then I'm going to pull that through instead of pulling through the same color. So I can now just let that tail end drop. I can go ahead and grip the new color, get my tension correct. And then I can pull down on the main color which we are not going to fasten off. This is going to um, stay there for now so that we can pick it up later. And then I'm going to make sure that the tension is okay at this point. So once you're happy with the tension, you can chain one and turn the work. You can again pull down just on those uh, tail ends and then we're ready for row six. So for row six, uh, we're going to start off with the chain one, which I've already done. And then we're going to double crochet into the first two stitches. So I'm actually going to lay my tail end down here so that I can crochet it in as we go along. And I'm going to lay it down away from me. And I'm going to double crochet into this very first stitch. So just at the base of that chain one, just as we've been doing before, you can see the tail end is laying over the hook and I'm going to do a double crochet into that stitch and then a double crochet into the next stitch. We're now going to start the um, bar stitch pattern. So we're going to do a front post treble around the next stitch two rows below. So you may have heard this being called a raised treble front post. Um, so we want to identify the row below, which is here and then the row below that, so we have one, two rows below. You might want to count backwards from where your stitches are just here. We have a double crochet, a double crochet, and then this is the third one across. So a front post treble is a front post double crochet in the US. So what we want to do for this is yarn over, locate that stitch, which is just here. And we're going to go behind the work, pull that stitch forward, and then bring the hook to the front of the work again. So the front post means bringing it forward or raised treble brings it forward. We're going to yarn over and pull through. We'll have three loops on the hook, just like we would do in a normal treble or a normal US double. Yarn over pull through two loops, you'll have two loops on the hook, and then yarn over, pull through two loops. Now what we want to do is we need to be mindful of the stitch that we've just worked over. So that's this stitch here. We can see we've worked into two stitches and this is the next stitch. Now we ignore that stitch because that is um, part of that raised treble that we've just done. And then we go into the next stitch I'm going to lay, continue to lay down my tail end, 
and do a double crochet, a double crochet, and then we're going to do a raised treble again. Now this one's slightly easier to see because we can just see where we did the treble. We'll find a double crochet, a double crochet, and then this next one is what we're going to work around. So yarn over to the back, to the front, pushing the stitch forwards, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Being mindful of this next stitch that we're missing, and then working into the one after. And we're going to repeat this all the way across. Double crochet, double crochet, raise treble around the double crochet from two rows below. Miss that stitch that we've just worked over. Double crochet, double crochet, and then raised treble. And we'll repeat this, double crochet, double crochet, raise treble, double crochet, double crochet, raise treble. So making sure you're missing those two double crochets from two rows below. Work over that stitch double crochet, double crochet, raise treble. And at the end of this row, if you've done those 23 stitches, you should have two stitches remaining. So we'll do double crochet, double crochet, and that completes row six. For row seven, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And then we're going to do a double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So that first one being in this first stitch just here. Double crochet. And you'll have 23 double crochets in this row, just as before. We are going to be changing color to the main color at the end of this row. So work up until you have one stitch remaining and I'll show you how we're going to float up this yarn to um, continue with this main colour. So pause the video and then meet me back in just a moment. So now you've worked your way to the end and you have your last stitch. We're going to insert our hook into this last stitch, yarn over and pull through. And instead of yarning over and pulling through this contrast colour, we're going to drop the contrast color. We aren't going to fasten off that color. We're going to pick up the main color from a few rows below. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through. So at this point, you want to make sure that you're not pulling too tight on this loop because we don't want it to alter the, uh, the pattern in any way. We want to make sure that it lays nicely enough so that we are getting enough of the stitch for the next row. So you want to chain one to turn your work. You can pull down on your contrast color for now, but that is going to stay there until we're going to pick it up again. And then we're going to start a pattern repeat. So for this, we're going to double crochet into the first stitch double crochet into the second stitch. And then this time, instead of going around the double crochet, we're working around the front post. So we're going to yarn over, go around this front post treble that we did two rows below, yarn over and pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two, you'll have two loops on the hook and yarn over, pull through two. So it's exactly the same as what we did before, but a bit easier because we can really see where that stitch is. We'll miss the stitch that we've just worked over and then go into that next stitch with a double crochet. So pattern repeat starts again, double crochet and front post treble crochet. 
miss the stitch that we've worked over. Double crochet, double crochet, front post, treble crochet. And you'll work this all the way along. Double crochet, double crochet, front post, treble crochet, double crochet, double crochet, front post, treble crochet. We'll do this all the way across and we will find that after we've done our last front post treble that we'll have two stitches remaining. So here comes our last one just here. We'll miss that stitch that we've just worked over and do our last two double crochets into that stitch. We're going to chain one, turn our work, and then double crochet all the way across. So you'll have 23 stitches in this row, and we're going to change back to the contrast color in our last stitch. So let's work all the way across here. Here we are at the end of our row. We have our last stitch, which will begin our double crochet. Drop the main color and pick up the contrast color. Yarn over and pull through. And there we have floated up our yarn, chain one, turn the work. And for row 10, we're going to repeat our row eight. So that's double crochet, double crochet, and then front post treble crochet round that stitch from two rows below. Miss that stitch that we've worked over, double crochet, double crochet, front post treble crochet, miss the stitch, and repeat all the way across until you have those last two stitches remaining after your front post treble crochet. So work your way across to the end just here and then meet me back once you're ready. Now that you have your two stitches remaining, you're going to do double crochet and double crochet, chain one and turn for row 11. And then you're just going to do your one double crochet in each stitch all the way across. You will be changing color in your last stitch. So I'm going to work my way to the end of this row and then meet you back when we are ready to change back to the main color. Here we are again at the end of row 11. We're going to insert our hook, yarn over and pull through. Drop the contrast color and pick up the main color to float it up the side of the work. And then yarn over and pull through. And we have changed to our main color. So I'm just going to chain up one and turn my work and this will be in readiness for row 12. So for rows 12 to 19, you're going to repeat rows eight to 11. So you can rewind this video to that point and keep repeating over and over if you need to. Um, if you feel like you need that extra video support. If not, you can go ahead and just keep repeating those rows eight, nine, 10 and 11 until you get to row 19. So what we'll be doing is just continuing the pattern repeat until we get to I think around this point, so we've built some more, and then we're going to do something slightly different to finish off the pattern and move on to the top of the wrist warmers. So go ahead and work that, and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so now you've completed row 19, or up to row 19, and you've changed color to your contrast color. So now that you've 
worked your way up to row 19. We're now going to uh, do row 20. So we'll, we will have changed to our main color. So for row 20, it's going to be exactly the same as row eight. So that's the double crochet, double crochet, and then front post treble crochet. And then double crochet, double crochet, and front post treble. You should be pretty used to doing this row now. So I'm going to leave you to work that to the end and then meet me back for row 21. So we are now at the end of row 20. We have finished with our contrast color. So we can go ahead and fasten that off. Now rows 21, 22 and 23 are all the same. We're going to chain one, turn our work and double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So that's 23 stitches in your row, one double crochet in each stitch, chain one and turn for the beginning of the row. So that's row 21, 22 and 23. So go ahead, pause the video, work those three rows and then meet me back once you're ready. So once you have finished this, we're going to go ahead and fasten off. You want to leave a long tail end for sewing. So as a rule, I like to make sure that I have plenty enough so I do about three of the length, like so. And then what we want to do is we want to, first of all, sew in any of our tail ends. So we've already crocheted in this one a little bit. I'm going to thread that up and I'm going to weave this in and out going back the opposite way just to secure it in a little bit more. But ideally what I like to do when I thread up my darning needle, I'm going to go back on myself once, about an inch or so, back again, trying to catch different parts of the stitches and go in between the threads and then back once more. So the rule of three in order to make sure that it's sewn in securely. Don't pull too tightly, otherwise it will distort the stitches. So I just give a gentle pull and then snip off. So I can do this one. And then I'm just going to sort this last one out here and then I'll show you what to do with this tail end. So now that you have sewn in all those additional ends, we're going to lay our work so that the right side is facing us. And then you're going to fold the work right side together like so. So the right sides are in the center of the mitt. We're now going to thread up our darning needle. And then what I'm going to do first of all is come back through the same side where this tail end is. I'm going to come back through the same side of the work and then also go through the corresponding section just here and pull through. So you want to make sure that these are lined up nicely so the rows are lined up and then you're going to come back and go through both thicknesses and just keep on working your way down. So we are going to need to leave a space in the work for our thumb hole. So you might want to put this around your hand and measure where you want that to be. 
but you want your thumb hole to be around two and a half inches in total. So the gap for the thumb hole is going to be two and a half inches. So if I just grab my mitt, my other mitt just here, we can see that I'm about at the same point of where the gap is going to be. So I'm just going to come down to the bottom of this section. And then when you get here, rather than tying off, you can go ahead and work round the thumb hole and I'm working around the same side where we've carried up that yarn and it just secures it into place a little bit more. You can of course choose to cut off and start again further down, it's totally up to you. But I'm going to start connecting again when I get to this last set um, of, of rows for this contrast colour. And then I'm going to continue to work my way all the way down. So when you get to your cuff, you want to again line up your stitches and you want to go through the corresponding stitches on the opposite side. Make sure that you work all the way down to your very last stitch and really try and make sure that you're working into the stitch as well and not just going through one thread or one loop. You want to make sure that you've got a couple of loops on your hook so it's nice and sturdy or on your needle, should I say. And then we can go ahead, fasten off by making a knot and you can sew in your ends. So again, I generally like to do the rule of three. I might not have enough yarn to do that in this case. We shall see. Oh, I've got a tiny little bit here. So rule of three, back, forth and back again. snip off your yarn and then we want to turn this the right way. So now that we have connected our mitt we're going to finish off with the decorative top where we're going to be using the crab stitch. So you want to again take your yarn and then we're going to go into the seam and then we're going to pull that yarn through. Chain one. And then for the crab stitch, instead of working away around our normal way, we actually go the opposite way. So for this, you want to hold onto your crochet hook and you want to pull your hook down so that you can see your next stitch and go into it like so yarn over and pull through, trying to make sure that the stitches are the opposite way round on your hook. So there's almost like a little bit of an overlap here, if you can see, like an X. So the one sitting over the other, and then you yarn over and pull through. Bring your stitch down again so that you can see the next stitch Go into the stitch, yarn over and pull through and then pull up. And then you can see that these two are crossed over at the bottom. Yarn over and pull through too. Pull it down into the next stitch, yarn over, bring it round, yarn over, pull through two. Pull your stitch down, 
find the next stitch, yarn over, twist it round, and then yarn over, pull through two. By ensuring that you've got that stitch makes you get this really nice knotted kind of look in your work. And then you're just going to work your way all the way round until you meet yourself at the beginning. So go ahead, work your way round and I'll show you how to finish off this section. Okay, so I've just worked my way all the way round. This is my first crab stitch. I'm going to go into that stitch, yarn over and pull through, and pull through for a slip stitch, and then go ahead and fasten off. And all you would have to do then is sew in your ends. Now what I would suggest when you sew this up is that you pull down the stitch and sew in this way and it just makes it for a little bit of a neater finish. If you would like to learn how to turn your wrist warmers into convertible mittens, you might want to check out this video. I'll show you how.